Hello, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Joshua T. Berglund. I'm your host, Joshua T. Berglund, and we are on the World's Mayor Experience platform that you can find at www.joshuatberglund.com. This is a very exciting day for me because I didn't know I'd be broadcasting again. And those of you who don't know, I've developed tremors about four months ago, maybe a little bit longer. And frankly, it's quite distracting when I talk. So, and the more I talk, the more I tremor. So I wasn't really thinking that I was going to do any broadcasting, but if I was asked to speak, I would speak. But it's been several months. Um, and to be honest with you, I've missed broadcasting and you know, and again, that wasn't enough to make me broadcast because there's something about being on camera trimmering. But at the same time, my mission and part of my mission is elevating the voices of the voiceless. And not to say that our guest is voiceless by any means, but he is part of the underserved community that I care so deeply about. And after getting to meet him at an event at the state capitol a few weeks ago, that I had the opportunity to help produce and also speak at, uh, I, getting to meet this gentleman was, it, it was inspiring. I mean, that was just like, there was a very short conversation that was inspiring. But then again, I wasn't sure I was going to hear from him. And then after talking after the event, uh, the next day, uh, we were invited to come check out his coffee shop in downtown St. Paul. Uh, Jessica and I went to go meet him last week and this was there was just something different there was something special about this place and I, I i you know while i can't really explain all the details of why it was special all i can say is there's a love and a vibe in this coffee shop that you don't get at starbucks that you don't get at dunkin donuts or any of your other coffee places and i live in a town that has amazing coffee houses absolutely but you don't get this vibe. This vibe at Trinity House Coffee is bringing people together from all walks of life. And I believe it has a lot to do with the leadership and the kind of man that Jerry Exum is. I, I don't know a lot about his story, don't know a lot about him other than what I learned over the weekend, but I gotta tell you, this is a special man with a special mission that in my mind, um, the world needs to hear. And the reason why the world needs to hear this message is because it doesn't just impact the local community of St. Paul. It doesn't just impact Minnesota. It impacts the world. It impacts farmers in Africa. Now, we're gonna let him tell his story. I'm not gonna tell it for him because I'm not an expert on his story, but this is a very special and unique mission that I hope inspires other people who are outsourcing their farming, they're not growing their own, so to speak, um, or even when it comes to creating their products, they take what this man has to say to heart. Because we all know about how products get made, don't we? We all know that there's, uh, sometimes it's a child that's making our Nikes. Sometimes that's a child is not being paid much, if anything at all, to make whatever product to go mine for the lithium or the cobalt. There's all kinds of injustices that happen around the world so that we can get our goods. I mean, I can't even, I'm like afraid to know who made my cell phone. I'm, I'm afraid to know. And maybe I don't want to know. But the fact is that ignorance isn't gonna help me very much. And my ignorance on how coffee farmers are treated didn't do any good either. So once I know about what's going on and I see, and, and, and I'm horrified by what's happening in the world and then going, well, I can't, well, what can I do about this? I mean, sure, I have a platform, I can talk about it, but I've never been to Africa, not yet anyway. I've never farmed for coffee, so I don't know the ins and outs. So when I meet someone like Jerry, who's not only like offering amazing service and bringing communities together, he's also offering a solution for farmers that I've never heard before. And it's exciting. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 
Mr. Jerry Exum from Trinity House Coffee. LLC in St. Paul, Minnesota. Welcome, Mr. Jerry Exum to Conversations with Joshua T. Berglund. Mr. Exum, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, Josh. How are you, man? Thanks for having me on. It's great to have you on again, or not have you on again. I apologize. I haven't done a broadcast in months. Um, it is great to see you again. Had the opportunity to meet you at the state capitol, and then I got to come to your amazing coffee shop. So I I'm just so excited to get into this story because this is not just a regular coffee shop. You're just not a you're not just a regular guy. You're somebody that has a mission. And never in my life have I ever done a broadcast about coffee or anything like that. But I am so stoked to get in, into this because this is not a normal story about coffee. So I'm honored that you're here, and I'm so excited to learn more about you, your mission, and what you're up to. Okay. So the very first question I want to know, um, and this is probably the most basic of all, but I would love to know a little bit about your background and how it led you to start Trinity House Coffee, LLC. Well, you know, I am um, in, in 2009, I met a, a beautiful young Kenyan girl um, by the name of Regina. Uh, Regina, you know, I, I fell in love with her story, man. Uh, she told me of how, you know, she and her sister, the struggles they had just trying to get a decent education in Kenya. Uh, during that time, there were maybe only 45% of Kenyan uh, girls that were able to afford to go to primary school. And she just told me about her struggles and how, you know, when the money ran out, that the, the growers, the farmers in her village actually pulled their resources together from their coffee proceeds and supported her education all the way from grammar school um, to the University of Nairobi, where she graduated with honors. Wow. So, and I, you know, right then I just, I just, you know, I don't know. I just kind of fell in love with these growers, <laughs> never having met them before. Um, but just their contribution and them caring enough and seeing enough in her to um, to want to support her education. It's become my mission to to one day be able to give back to those villagers that uh, that helped her. How does the volcanic salt impact the taste and the quality of your coffee? Well, the volcanic soil, um, particularly in an area where we procure our coffees from, uh, known as the Great Rift Valley, uh, maybe a century or so ago, that there was a, a volcano that actually erupted uh, in that region. And even though it was 100 years or so ago, that soil is still rich uh, with the, from the volcanic acid. And it's just loaded with nutrients, man, from potassium to iron. I mean, a, a, a bunch of really good uh, health benefits are found in, in uh, volcanic soil, which I didn't know. I, I didn't know that either. So yeah. but, but, that you're saying the coffee that's that's grown in this soil has these extra health benefits. Does that do, do those health benefits transfer to us when we drink the coffee? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you can you can wow. taste it in the coffee. Our, our coffees, um, and not not a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, coffee producers or, you know, the, the larger brands don't focus on that, that area, the Rift Valley area. And I think just because they're more concerned with the bottom line, but we're concerned about, you know, bringing the perfect cup of coffee uh, to our customers each and every time. And it's good coffee. I think I shared with you when we were there uh, this last weekend that, that I've had two cups of coffee in my life that I didn't need to doctor it up. And your 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 coffee was one of them. It is absolutely fantastic. 
Yeah, you know, I, I ran the risk when I started the company of becoming my own customer. <laughs> <laughs> so that, what is it? Don't get high on your own. Wait, that, that's the wrong thing. Wait, you were talking about coffee here. So you're not supposed yeah. to get a caffeine high on your own supply? No, well, according to Biggie Smalls, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> As I've already mentioned, uh, I've been by your coffee shop and I love it. There, it's a there's a vibe there. There's a lot going on. Can you tell us about the unique location you chose for Trinity House International? Well, you know when when we um, began searching for the perfect spot, we you know we um, visited several locations. And what immediately struck me about this location, and it was evident, is that we have the opportunity where we're located to um, service both the affluent community and the Wells Fargo Towers, as well as the disadvantaged community that, that uh, we serve. And we, we're able to offer them both the same quality premium coffee beans for the same affordable price. And so it kind of levels the playing field. Uh, I spent much of my time when I first moved to Minnesota in the inner city um, of the Metro. And I'll tell you, you you'd be hard pressed to find a good cup of coffee in the, uh, in the inner city, in the disadvantaged areas. You have to go outside of the area in order to find a, a, a good cup of coffee. And so we saw an opportunity there to, um, to be able to provide those premium coffee beans to a disadvantaged community. And they're just loving us here. They're so appreciative. We've got customers that have been loyal from day one. And interestingly enough, even the affluent community are, um, you know, they're, they're really honored to be a part of Trinity House because they know what our mission is as well. And they're on board with it, you know. They're so proud that, you know, that, that we're here and that we're able to provide the same coffees um, for all of the communities that, that we serve. One of my favorite things about your story, and what I only know a little bit about it, but you are committed to helping the growers and their families. And a lot of people out there don't really understand the type of labor that growers or the people that make our shoes or our clothes, they don't really understand what they go through. But I would love to hear from you. Tell us a little bit about the farmers and also your commitment to supporting them and their families. You're absolutely right, Josh. I mean, the uh... It's, you know, there's a long, a long term history of the growers being just severely um, undercompensated for the work that they do. And, you know, to your point, we, you know, most of us don't have any idea what really goes into getting that perfect cup of coffee to our breakfast table. Uh, and the growers, you know, they do all of the backbreaking work, but they're the least compensated throughout the supply chain. And, you know, the, the co-ops there um, that generally handles all of their business because most of the Kenyans there are uneducated because they can't afford it, as I mentioned early on. And so they trust these people to handle their, you know, the books for them and handle their finances. and they're, they're paid maybe 35, 40 cents a pound for their coffees. And uh, even the larger coffee companies like a Starbucks or Caribou will go over there and they'll pay these girls a hundred grand for the entire lot. But that lot is worth probably 800,000, you know, but to a, to a hardworking villager, a hundred grand is a lot of money. Uh, it, 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 it is impactful when you think, when you consider the exchange rate, which in Kenya is probably a 180 right now. So every U.S. dollar is equal to 180 shillings. And so you multiply that by 100,000, that's, that's good money. But it's nothing compared to 
what we want to be able to get in position to offer these growers, you know, three or four dollars a pound. And you go from 45 cents a pound to four dollars a pound. That's life changing, oh, you yeah. know, for these growers. There's a lot that they can do to enhance the quality of their life. Another thing that we want to do is to be able to educate them on creating better crops um, for the consumer. And, you know, in doing so, we've established a company here, or we're in the process of establishing an agricultural um, exporting company that will ship uh, equipment. You know, it's not new, but it's really good used equipment to these farmers um, in order to, to produce I mean, if you think the coffee that you had at Trinity is good now, <laughs> you know, wait until we're able to bless them with some real quality equipment. And uh, it, it, it's just amazing what they'll be able to do in terms of the quality of their, their uh, product. If, if the growers start making more money, what would that do to the overall bottom line to the people that usually control the distribution and so forth? Well, you know, coffee is, is so widespread and that that would just be a, a tip of the iceberg. I mean, imagine it's uh, coffee is the second largest or second highest commodity traded on the planet. So Starbucks is larger uh, as they are. They've only tapped into one percent <laughs> of the market, wow. you know. So these growers that we 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 specifically have relationship over there, in the in the village, um, known as um, as Nairi, it's the Nairi district. You know, there are maybe a hundred micro farmers there. So they're they're tiny farms but they produce a lot of coffee because it, it's still community over there. Those villages are still all family and they still all work together. So, you know, they're, they're probably 150 to 200 micro lots that we actually have access to and uh, can make a difference on, on a really high scale. So you don't have the same issues with dealing with the cartel and other things that th they do, like with Colombia and other countries, is that correct, or am I missing something? No, because of because of fair trade, you know, we're we're able to go directly to the farmers. You know, um, my kid's mom will just go over there, you know, and she'll have a conversation with her family, you know, and it, it's still a negotiation process, you know, um, you know, and there. Oh, Regina, we'll, you know, we'll sell it for three dollars a pound. You know, that's all they want, and that's you to them. But Regina say, no, we do you one better, my brother. Four dollars fifty cents. Oh, get out of here! You know, they can't believe it. But it's just a blessing to be a blessing. You know, to know that you're having that much of an impact. Um. And you can actually change the world one cup at a time. You can change the world, you know, and that, that's what we're looking to do. I have a why that brings me to tears when I think of it. And after getting to meet you last Saturday and really having our first real conversation, I got a real feel for your why and what you're all about. But more specifically, I want to ask you, how does serving both the affluent and disadvantaged disadvantaged communities align with your why? You know, Josh, I um, I just love people, man, mm -hmm. and I believe that people are people. You know, and there, you know, there are things that bring people together. Music brings people together. Coffee brings people together. And I, I just want to share an interesting story with you. Um, and one day I, I was hearing, you know, it was kind of slow. And I was talking to a friend of mine, Ashley. 
um, works for the ATF here in the towers. And as we were talking, a gentleman came up um, and he's a part of the disadvantaged community. In fact, he's homeless. And Emily, I mean, uh, Ashley um, just struck up a conversation with this young man, asked him, you know, just out of curiosity, how did you become um, homeless? You know, how did you get to the point that you are in life? You know, and sometimes we look at people and we tend to judge people. Mm. We look down on people maybe because our life is a little bit better than ours. But hearing this young man's story, you know, his his wife passed away. He lost his job. He lost his home. You know, child services took his kids. And he just checked out on life, you know. And one of the things that touched my heart is that he said, and now Trinity House Coffee has become like my family. You know, he said, it's kind of like the old Cheers show. You know, I want to go somewhere where people know my name. Mm -hmm. And he said, and this, this is like home. He said, I'm homeless, I'm on the streets. But when I come to your coffee shop, it feels like home. And he said, the people here like Ashley never look down on me. The people in the towers never look down on me. They always, they're willing to conversate with me. You know, they'll buy me a cup of coffee, maybe a sandwich from Subway. And it really gives me hope that, you know, one day I will be able to come off the streets. And it reminds me that there are still some great people in this world. And that that's encouraging for me. And I just, man, I... I had to take a pause, a Selah moment, the Bible calls it. And um, it took everything in me to hold back the tears, man. And that, That's, that reinforced my why. You know, I, I thought I had a pretty solid why, <laughs> but this guy reinforced my why, man. And the days when I have to pull myself out of bed to come to the shop, you know, sales are slow. I haven't scaled to where I want to be yet, but I think about this guy, Brennan, and uh, I hop to my feet, man. And I, you know, I come in and I just show up and and I'm, I'm, we're blessed and honored to be in, uh, in the environment that we're in to where we can just meet people wherever they are. It's, it's it reminds me maybe not the best analogy but because I, I forget the name of the sea but there is a sea where the fresh water and the salt water meet and you can see the line it's like what's separating it's it, it's like the difference of mud and rainwater the difference yeah. that you see in this yeah. body of water and what i i think about that is the typical divide there's this hard divide between the rich and the poor yes your location and your heart for people mm -hmm. you help oil you are helping oil and water mix mm -hmm. to use a, 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 a maybe a poor analogy but it really is beautiful because i don't think it can be said enough how the specific location where you're at Mm -hmm. it, it, it must just be ordained by God because you are right there in this melting pot of the rich and the poor and intersecting in ways that the way that we see it in television, the way that we see it in movies is you've got the guy in the business suit walking past the dude with home, the, the guy that's homeless may throw some change in the cup, but they keep on walking, bar barely pay any mind. You're changing all of that with Trinity yeah. House. And it's so inspiring for me to see that. Um, you. I'm, you know, I, I get, I'm black, I, you know, I get, I have, I'm wearing a suit and all that, but I've been homeless. I've been homeless twice. I know, sure, what, right. like. I know yeah. what it's like to have people walk past and pay no attention, you know, yeah. and <laughs> it, it, it's tough, you know? So I honor you for that. But at the same time, I want to say this, it takes a special kind of man, a chosen man, for that specific assignment to be able to pull something like that off. And yeah. me, it's inspiring just being in your presence uh, Saturday and seeing how people are drawn to you 
for the man of God that you are. And I, I'm not going to sit here. I know the Lord has something to do with it, um, but it's a beautiful thing to witness. And I got to tell you, Jessica and I both left uh, very, very inspired after meeting you and seeing your operation and just being around some of the people that look up to you and admire you. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what it's all about giving back, you know, um, because like you said, most of us or many of us has, we know what it's like to struggle, you know, and um, to take a page out of uh, one of the young ladies that I met at Kowalski's a couple of weeks ago, you know, and I told her that I was going to steal her, her slogan that, that she, uh, <laughs> that she said, she said, you know, when life gets tough and it's going to get tough, she said, just keep on grinding, Jerry. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm going to use that. I'm doing an interview with a guy named Josh <laughs> in a couple of weeks, and I'm going to steal that slogan. So, you know, we do, man. And and that that's a message that we can give to everybody, uh, an encouragement in life. You know, life is going to knock you down. It's inevitable, yeah. you know, but just keep grinding, you know, and eventually if you don't give up, if you just keep showing up, things will turn around. I, I truly believe that. And this is off topic a little bit, but to your point about grinding, um, there's a gentleman that I used to travel and speak with, and he wrote a book called Three Feet from Gold. Mm -hmm. And essentially the nutshell of the book is stories of people who quit three feet before they reached what God had for them. Yeah. They reached their destiny. Yeah. And there's times because I I pursued the de desires of my heart. I, I yeah. pursued the dream that God placed inside of me. And it's the scariest, frustrating, confusing, exhilarating, joyful, most exciting. And mm -hmm. at the same time, it's, uh, I don't know if frustration is the right word, but it's like every time you think you're almost there and then you realize you're not, and then you mm -hmm. have those moments of wanting to quit. And you're like, what am I going to do? Like, I thought this was it. These were the people. They they said that they were going to help. They said they were going to give me the funding, and then they don't. They disappear. And the yeah. story of the story of almost getting there. When you're so close. So close. And then mm -hmm. one day, there's people that just go, I can't take enough of this. It's not for me. It's not for me. And then they walk away only to find out that they were right there. And that book reminded me of what you were just saying because – you know, it's so hard to pursue what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. It's 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 easy to do what other people tell us to do or like, here's your job title. This is what your instructions are. This is what you need to go do. Yes. When it's you and the creator. It's you and God. And you're, you're only taking your commands from him. <laughs> yes. That's a scary decision to make. Yeah, you were called. But what is you know the verse better than I do. Many are called, but you you are chosen. That's true. You're you're absolutely right, man. And it it does take a, a special kind of person to endure uh, when you feel all alone. You know, I've I've sat here many days and barely make a hundred bucks. I'm like, what, Lord? What am I doing here? Mm. You know, and he. He spoke to me and he said, stop worrying so much about the destination mm -hmm. and just learn to enjoy the journey. You know, and I've, I've met so many great people and the, what really has impressed upon my heart are the people in the towers. They're not snooty. They're not standoffish. You know, they, they're really genuinely good people in both communities in the towers and on the streets and you know the disadvantaged communities and just when you see the two of them have a conversation it's like neither is judging the other like they're they're just people you know and it's it's amazing to see so we've heard some amazing things i mean like we're really getting to know your heart we know about the coffee we know about the purpose we know how you want to help but a man like you i know has a big vision like you're not playing for today. I mean, yes, you're taking care of today. You're grateful for today. You're being a good steward of today. 
but I believe you're a man that builds for the future also. So can you share with us where you envision Trinity House being in the next five years and also just share the grand vision, if you will, of Trinity, Trinity House International? Well, in the next five years, you know, one, one of the places that I think is a um, good starting point is just local grocery stores. And, you know, we've been accepted to, uh, to go onto the shelves of Kowalski's uh, throughout the metro. You know, we're, um, and what one of the things I didn't share that I think is important is that we're also registered vendors with MACV, uh, the Minnesota Assistant Council for Veterans. You know, and we work with them to do some amazing things to where, you know, we've we've gone and provided free coffee to the homeless vets. You know, we're we're, we're now partnered with the uh, University of Minnesota uh, to where we're going to be uh, collaborating with them uh, to go out in the, into the community and set up kiosks and things like that, and you know, just give out free coffees. Uh, it's not always about the bottom line. You know, coffee should be about connection. It should be about culture and connecting the different cultures, you know. And so that's that's my vision for Trinity House International is to, to be homegrown a Minnesota company, but to become a household name everywhere, and not just for our coffee, but just for our love. Uh, for people and being that bridge, um, you know, to uh, across the, the nations and, you know, bringing different ethnicities and their people from all walks of life together, you know, and um, because we're, we're so divided right now, but the reality of it is we're all related in one way or another. Everything that happens in Egypt or Israel or Africa, any part of the world affects us all. There's no denying that, you know, and so we want to be a part of that. Whatever God is doing in the world, I'd love to be a part of that. And, you know, you'd be surprised how that first cup of coffee in the morning really sets the tone for the rest of your day, you know, so, um, yeah, we just we just want to be able to uh, expand, you know, to become a, a globally recognized company and not just for coffee, but for our contribution um, to mankind. Are, are you thinking of creating other Trinity House coffee shops around the world and in other inner cities to create the same type of environment that, well, allows the oil and vinegar so to speak to to mix mm -hmm. absolutely and we we've been we uniquely have um i personally have siblings in practically every major city in the u.s you know from new york to houston to chicago and so we we plan to target those locations atlanta miami um and just start you know building one here two there three here, you know, and just um, until it's it spread throughout the U.S. and Canada. And as you said, having the same, you know, heartfelt mentality, um, primarily to, to give to communities that can't afford, basically couldn't afford a good cup of coffee without Trinity House establishing itself within their communities. I'm hoping to see you in hotels, but I'm going to give you a little insight on one of my visions and goals is that we want to create youth media literacy centers all over the world and put them in inner cities. Um, so in the vein of, or, you know, like a boys and girls club, but yeah, we're going to offer the same things that a boys and girls club does. However, we're going to tie in media literacy skills and have a production studio on site to take that knowledge to be able to put it towards starting careers and launching careers of, of artists, of, of talent, mm. um, of entrepreneurs and business owners. And so yeah. when, when that, I believe that that is what God has placed on my heart to do. 
And yeah. when that happens, you will be our official coffee partner <laughs> because not only do I love your coffee, I love the mission and I just love yeah. you as a man. Like I, I'm so grateful that you reached out to me uh, right after you know the event or as soon as the event was winding down, we connected, we made a brief connection and then getting to meet you in person, I, I just, yes. a divine appointment as some people say, and I'm grateful for that because meeting you has inspired me and added fuel for my own mission. So I want you to know that the work that you're doing is impacting people that are not even directly involved with what you're doing. Yes, it, and it's a pleasure meeting you and Jess as well, man. And you know, I, I, I'm a guy that doesn't believe in coincidences. Mm -hmm. I believe that everything is divinely ordered, and you know, it's just they're done on God's timing. You know what I mean? And I, and I think that when you're the type of person that you know that that tries to do good for others, I mean, intently, deliberately. Mm -hmm. Uh, trying to impact other people's life in a positive way, then I think that the universe gets on board with that and resources become available, doors begin to open um, because your your goal is to enhance someone else's life other than just your own. Mm -hmm. you no, know, of course you want to live comfortably. Why not? You know, but I, I'm I'm the type of guy where Man, my heart overflows when I'm able to bless somebody else and I see that that appreciation in them, you know, mm -hmm. and and a confused look on their face like, why are you doing this? You know, because there's a shortage of good people in the world. I believe that that everybody is, you know, is, is at their core good. But I think circumstances and their own desires or whatever keeps them from really uh, uh, achieving what they've been sent to this earth to do because we're here on a mission yeah you know we're not just here to 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 obtain as much you know wealth as we can possibly obtain we're here to affect one another's lives and you know you you you've certainly done that josh I mean, just a limited amount of time that we've known each other. Uh, you've certainly been a blessing in my life. And I can, you know, as the Lord told me, I can hardly wait to see what this journey is going to look like because I think it's going to be a fascinating journey. We obviously all face challenges in life, <laughs> especially when it comes to building something that we have a big vision for. So I'd love to know what type of challenges have you faced in building Trinity House Coffee, and how have you overcome them? Well, you know, as you said, one of the greatest struggles for a startup, it, it always starts with capital. Uh, it seemed like you never have enough capital. Um, and just the support of, you know, folks that can help us scale to the next level. And a lot of it doesn't require a lot of money. You know, some sometimes it's just, folks like yourself just willing to volunteer their services through social media uh, and different outlets um, that that I can, I believe can take us to the next level. And one of the ways that I've been able to overcome that, it's, you know, it's really difficult when you have to work in the business six days a week, open the close and work on the business in your spare time you know, um, sleep is is really uh, hard to come by. You know, because I I'm always thinking of ways to to improve my business. You know, to grow my company, and I've been fortunate enough to have people to just people that I didn't know yesterday just seemingly show up and say, "Hey, I want to help you." You know, um, what do you need? you know, like you did, you know, and just being, you know, not to get too deep on you, but being spirit led, you know, you can you talk know, about I have to on. make a decision. Okay. I'm going to close the shop today because I heard there's something going on at the Capitol that I might want to be a part of. And then I met you 
<laughs> you know. Wow. And yeah, I lost. I may have lost a few dollars that I could have used that day. But again, as you said, we're looking at our long term goals, you know, and I, I'd rather sacrifice those few dollars today in an effort to be able to have the type of impact in, in this community and in communities around the world that I want to have for years to come. Gosh, that's powerful. Thank you for sharing that. I and I felt every second of, of you saying that. Yeah. It's just, you know, this question, I I, I, I didn't, I, I, this question just came to me, but where did your heart for people come from? Like, were you, were you just raised this way to have a heart for people? Or like, where did this come from? It's very rare. You know, I meet a lot of people that are rough around the edges, but then you can see their heart, you know, <laughs> you have to like work and dig through some stuff before you can go, oh yeah, there is a person in there. Um, and, and I'm okay with that because I've been like that myself, yeah. but it's very rare that you meet somebody and just like, have they just been an angel their whole life? Have they always had this heart? Like, where did this come from for you? Because this, I don't feel it's sincere. Like I know it's sincere and here's how I know it. I watch how other people speak to you. I mm -hmm. listen to out. I listen to people talk to me about you, and they didn't know who I was. They just started talking about you. So, where did this heart come from? You know, I, I think I was born with it, man. I I've just always had compassion. I've always had a, a love for people in general, people from, like I said, from all walks of life, man. And I've always had the ability to, to look past the facade, you know. Sometimes, like you said, you see people in there rough around the, the edges, but really underneath all of that is someone that's hurting. You know, and, and a lot of time we express our hurt through anger and aggression. You know, and sometimes all the person needs to know is that somebody cares. And you can make a difference by just showing, you know, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. <laughs> so you know, true. and I, I just love people, man. I just love, you know, just conversating with people and finding out, you know, how did you get to, to where you are? You know, people don't just wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm going to be homeless living on the streets of Minneapolis, or I'm going to be a drug addict or even a gang banger. Yeah. You know, um, somebody dropped the ball with that kid somewhere, you know, or he faced a trauma that uh, just, you know, devastated him so much that he vowed that he'll never allow himself to, to ever be hurt again. But then you have a conversation with that kid. And like you said, he know that your words are genuine. And now you have his ear and you can impress upon him that there's a different way to live. You don't have to live like that. You know, I share my background with him. You know, I grew up in the inner city, the son of a steel mill worker. You know, my daddy worked for 30 years at U.S. Steel and re he retired. And when he retired, they, they gave him a gold watch and sent him on his way. You know what I mean? And growing up in Gary, Indiana, oh wow, the steel mill was basically our lifeline. You know that that was our, our our resources, in a nutshell. You know, and then one day my dad went literally just went to work, and the gates were closed, brother. They had picked up and moved to Philly, and some of the plants moved to Texas. And I watched my dad, a very compassionate man, become a bitter guy because, you know, he, he took pride in being able to, to provide for his family. Now, after 30 years of hard work, he's unable to, to do that. So he took an early retirement. They gave him an early retirement, gave him a gold watch and say, we're sorry that it had to end this way. You know, and so, as I said, that was the city's lifeline. And when the steel mills left, it was as if somebody pulled the plug on that region. And it, it hasn't recovered since, no. you know. And so 
it, it was it was hard for me to watch my dad go through that transformation of being that loving, kind, compassionate father to being a, a bitter, you know, and I hate to say it, verbally abusive guy. And so as a result of that, I started hanging out with the guys in the street, the gangbangers and the drug dealers. And I had maybe a, a 18 year battle for drug addiction myself. Mm. And I moved to Minnesota. Someone told me about a place called Minnesota Dalton Teen Challenge. I said, adult teen challenge, do I look like a teenager to you? <laughs> he said, well, no, they accept adults now. Yeah. And I went there, man, and I met this guy named Pastor Rich Sherber and um, had many conversations with him, man. And he said, you know, short-term pain creates long-term gain. Mm. You know, if you just be patient and you just show up and you hang in there, and find hope wherever you need to find hope. Eventually it'll turn around. Your time will come. And you know, it has. I've hung, I've hung my hat on those words. And I man, I rep and I, I talk about, I scream to the rafters about adult and teen challenge to this day, man, because they were a game changer for me. Now I've been sober for almost 10 years. And, you know, I, I believe that anything is possible. Mm. I've got a clear state of mind. I've got a, a foundation in my faith um, as a follower of Christ. And I, you know, I just want to be that conduit to, uh, to bring other people to a place to where they, you know, they can now believe that all things really are possible if you only believe. It's, it's such a beautiful message. And, you know, we met uh, at an underserved business event at the state capitol in St. Paul. And I would like to ask you, um, and I, I love the organization uh, that put it off. You can find edact.org, edact.org. You all should check them out. It's an amazing organization uh, that supports underserved businesses. But because this is where we met at this event, you got to hear a lot of the people speaking uh, at the event. You got to hear the politicians talk. You got to hear local banks talk. You got to hear, how did that feel to you to hear all of those different voices? Some of voices that have been in power for a little bit, others not so much, but they're involved in the community. Hearing their their messages, what, it, what was your biggest takeaway from that? And it doesn't have to be positive. It could be anything. But what was your takeaway? Did you believe what the politicians were saying? Do, you know, How did you feel about the community sport? What was your overall take of that event? Well, you know, I, I actually went and I, I spoke at, um, at a committee meeting a couple of years ago or, or before the um, – the um, Senate committee. And, you know, there were a lot of promises made. You know, they, many of them said that they will come in and visit Trinity House uh, shop. I haven't seen them yet, but I, I think they have good intentions. Um, but it's good to see them at least being willing to to show up and and listen to what we had to say in terms of you know, our struggles, you know, it's, uh, I honestly don't feel like cap the, um, the capital and the resources that we need have always been available to us, to me personally, as a minority business owner, mm -hmm. but I think that's changing now. You know, I, I think that the, um, the, you know, the society is starting to see that you know, that we really do have something to contribute. Uh, we have something to offer. And, you know, and I, and I think they're starting to recognize that. And it's good for the economy. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, it's not just a matter of, um, you know, um, we're not looking for a handout. We're yeah. just looking for a, a level playing field, you know, an opportunity to, uh, to uh, participate and be a part of our community and make a difference in our community. 
And unfortunately, the truth of the matter is, in order to do that, we need finan more financial resources, you know. And so, yeah, that's, um, like I said early on, you asked the question, what, what was my greatest struggle? And that's been my greatest struggle. But somehow I've, you know, God has sustained me. I'm still here. And, you know, again, just showing up, you never know who you're going to meet or what opportunity is going to come. Now, if I just stayed at home and stayed in bed or, you know, watch my favorite show, Blue Bloods, you know, I, I never would have met you and I never would have met some of the amazing people that have come along beside me. Uh, groups like NEON and NDC, the Neighborhood Development Council, that is, you know, NDC is who bought all of the equipment that you see in the shop here. They purchase everything for me, you know? And, but unfortunately now I'm, you know, just to be transparent and, and, you know, I don't know if I should say this on this platform, but I'm a little yeah. behind on, on that loan. And it's just because of the struggles that I, that I've had and being able to scale my business. I came in with a vision of being able to grow, um, maybe an unrealistic vision, being able to grow faster than I've been able to scale, but I'm still here. I'm still trying, and as long as I do that, I know eventually one day I'll be able to go back and you know and and take care of that responsibility and and pay those things off, you know. And you will, yeah, because you you're doing, in my opinion, you're doing the right things to guarantee that. Yeah, and and I and I and your heart is in the right place, and I understand that there's other factors with business that play into this but with the level of support that not only have i seen for you and in, in trinity house coffee um and the other things that are happening for you i believe that those problems are going to take care of themselves because you have an important mission that does affect a lot of people because even if you take your eyes off of uh just the coffee aspect of it or the fact that you're bringing attention to the farmers of the coffee, what that does is it opens the door to create other conversations because the people that are doing the backbreaking hard work that mm -hmm. you, no one really wants to do, mm -hmm. they're getting the crap pay. They're getting the, the pay that will not feed their families. They're getting the pay that doesn't allow them to be able to provide like other people, yet they're doing all the hard labor. And yeah. society for a long time has said, well, go get a go get a degree. Get a go. That's not all. That's not possible for some people. But it's not even an option. That's not an option for me. And I had scholarships. Yeah. But I had no business being in school. Like yeah. I know that that may sound crazy, but it's true. Like I, for me, school was the worst thing. But yeah. there's people. So that that excuse or that that reasoning of go get a you know go get a better job or go get an education. That's mm -hmm. not the answer at all. There's the system, the way it's designed now is, is, is I, I hate the word rigged, but it's not really set up for everyone's success. <laughs> it's That's set true. up for us to make a few people successful and That's that true. has got to change. But I believe organizations like yours, uh, organiz like Equitable Development Action, what they're doing, but there's more organizations in each city, in each uh, uh, each state around the country, that are seeing this these 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 issues, and they're starting to bring solutions forward. So while mm -hmm. I don't trust any politicians, and I'll, I don't align politically with any party because I'm tired of their lip service, yeah. and I, and I didn't necessarily even believe what I was hearing from the state capitol that day. Yeah. But what I do believe in is the people that have had enough. Yeah. People like yourself that you're not, it's not like you're going out to fight the system. What you're doing is just bringing solutions for it. Mm -hmm. And that is inspiring. People are going to flock to that. I am so grateful uh, for all of your time today. I, I, this is, you know, I think you're one of the neatest person people I've ever met. And I, I love your mission. You I love much. what you're about. And really, I don't really have anything to say left but i would like to give you the floor 
to please share a message with your customers, uh, your supporters, anything that's on your heart to share, please share it, but also make sure that you plug your website, your location, where people can find you and all that. But the floor is yours to share a message that you feel led to share. Well, you know, I'm as I said, we're just honored to be here. Um, and we're, we're going to continue um, to provide a quality coffee. You know, um, it's not my intent to, to put any of my competitors down, but I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. Trinity House Coffee has the best coffee in the metro, hands down. You know, where we procure it from, um, the, the volcanic soil that is grown in, and we won't ever change up on you. You know, there was a time I remember that that um, Starbucks was bringing in A1 coffee, double A grade coffee. But once they established their fan base, if you will, or, or their clientele, um, then it became all about the bottom line. And they drew back on bringing in the best quality being that they could. We won't do that. You know, when we go when we go global and we will go global. Um, because I believe that we have the support and that support is not just our customers, you know, spending money and buying our product. It's also their prayers and their well wishes. You know, they want us to do well. They want to see us succeed. And that's what encourages me. You know, I, I, I feel like I can do this because I know, as you said, that, that I'm making a difference. You know, and so, you know, it's that old saying, you got to crawl before you can walk. You got to be willing to grind. You got to be willing to show up on those days you don't want to come in, you know. And eventually, you know, I, I heard a, a Pastor Murdoch say that everybody on the planet is one individual, one influential person away from changing the whole trajectory of their life. Just one influential person finding favor in you can change the whole trajectory of your life. You know, and I believe that. And in order to, to make that divine connection, you got to be out there in the community. You got to be out there working hard and doing what you need to do to put yourself in position to receive God's best. Because you're not going to receive that laying home at home under the covers. <laughs> You can't just pray and say, God bless me. I'll be here laying down when you decide to do that. <laughs> no, it, our relationship with God has to be a partnership. He does his part, but you have to do your part. And then he does examine your heart. Okay, if I do give you these things, the desires of your heart, what are you going to do with them? You know? Are you going to make a difference? Because that's what I called. That's what I sent you to do. If you promise to do that, then your cup will run over. You know, the, the word says that if you do the right thing, that God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't even be able to sustain it. And that's me. That's what I want to do. I will. I just want to be able to help, you know, the people that you can, you can look at people and see when they're they're visibly struggling. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be able to approach a family, you know, African family or Mexican family or okay, whoever. And I see the kids are, you know, maybe not well kept, you know, at a grocery store. Let me get that for you. Can I can I pay for that for you? You know. And it's not with the expectation of getting anything in return. It's just being able to let them know that, as I said, there are still some good people in the world and there is still hope because there are good people in the world that are willing to, you know, look beyond themselves and their own needs to make a difference in my life and our life. That's so beautiful. Can you buy the coffee online? Can I? Can you have it shipped anywhere in the well, world? The website, you know, that's one of the things I'm hoping you and I can discuss as well. You know, I the the website needs work. You know, it hasn't 
generated any any money for us. But I'm I'm working with a group called Neon, and we're getting ready to totally uh, restructure the website, you know, and make some improvements uh, on the brand itself. And um, and then you know, folks will be able to go directly to the website um, to support us. But right now, just you know, through purchasing our coffee at the shop or you can download the Clover app, you know, and there there is a button where you can give, you can donate if you want to, and and things like that. So well, I, I'm happy to help you with your website. And if you want to include me in that meeting with them, I'm happy to because I do know, you know, what you can do that'll help because I want to see this go global also. And I think I think we can maybe work together. I, I think we, we do have a great story and, and it's it's authentic, it's genuine. And you know, perhaps we can even put together a GoFundMe or you know, um, you know, things like that that can also help us uh, to generate some more capital to where we can start doing more things to um uh, you know, to to enhance the lives of those growers back back home in Kenya too. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that you can do. I mean, there's affiliate programs. Like when I this coffee is incredible. It's mm. it it really is great coffee, and there are a lot of coffee. Like I I think I told you, I'm more of I like teas. That's mm -hmm. I mean, I drink coffee, but mm -hmm. when I get into my being a connoisseur, it's it's tea. Yeah. Uh, but good coffee is like where it's at. Is this the is this the packaging? This the Kenyan tea. Oh, oh! I gotta try that. Oh, it's it's excellent, man. This is a really really good tea. See, I gotta I gotta come back to St. Paul. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Um, this has been a joy for me. And Trinity House, wait, I gotta give the website trinityhousecoffee.com. Trinity House Coffees with the Nest. Coffees. Okay. Coffees. Tr Trinity House Coffees dot com. And um, give the address of your location so people can come visit you. So we're located at in the Wells Fargo Bank building at 37 Street East. So it's 30 and then 7 Street East. East and St. Paul, and the zip is five five one zero one, right That's next to the subway, right next to the Children's Museum. Yeah, it's a great location. Um, it's 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 such a neat location. I St. Paul is a neat city. It's a neat downtown. Um, I used to live in downtown Minneapolis, but I got to spend a lot of time in St. Paul, mm -hmm. and I really I really love that community there. I love your location. It's just it's a blast. I love you. I love what you're up to. I'm rooting for you all the way. And of course, we're going to stay connected because I, Absolutely. any support that Jessica and I can uh, give, we're going to because we believe in what you're doing. But we also have a heart for Africa. Like our, our thing is we, all, we love our community. We have a heart for our community and we want to serve and do serve in our community. But we have a global vision like yourself. And Africa plays a major, major part. Uh, in our mission and what we're doing. So That's it just awesome. makes sense for us to be collaborating like we are. And I'm grateful for who you are as a man. You've you've impacted my life greatly in the short time that we've known each other. Thank and uh, I've really enjoyed talking to you. And I, I'm an admirer of you also. Uh, let me just say that because not, not many people are, are doing what you do, man, without you know, looking for anything in return. You just, you have a heart like me for helping people, man. And that's that's where I get my joy, man, from from hopefully making a difference in somebody else's life. It, God spared my life like he spared yours. And I don't know how many times he spared your life, but I, you know, I'm sure it's a few times. And oh, so yeah. when, when God got a hold of me and I gave my life to him, part of that commitment was I was all in and it, my life was no longer my own. It was what he wants to do with me. And, and fortunately yeah. that that's turned out to be the best path for me, but it's also been the path that, yeah, it's been hard, 
Uh, it's been actually been harder when I was a a, 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 a a junkie and a degenerate. My life was a lot easier than yeah. living for what God wanted for me. However, the only joy I ever feel is when I'm doing what God has led me to do. And that's yeah. certain. So to have the opportunity means a lot. But again, getting to work with people like yourself is pretty special too. So And, and you can't buy that. You can't no. buy the feeling that you give when you know that you're make it, making a difference in somebody's life. Amen. Amen. Well, brother, thank you for your time. I look forward to thank seeing you. you again, and I'll talk to you very soon.